find out how Pee Wee's doing. Pee Wee was in the Merchant Marines. So I went to the Siemens Union and asked if the Luralene was in port because that was the ship he was working on. The clerk asked suspiciously, the Luralene's not in, but who's your brother? I said, Ham Sin K. He pulled out my dog tag and said, you're Fung, Edward. How can he be your brother when his surname is Ham? I said, I don't know. He's always been my brother. <laughs> this paper sun business is so common in Chinatown, I never thought anything of it. So Eddie also grew up during the time of the Great Depression, and he was instilled with Chinese values of responsibility, frugality, self-reliance, and honor. So Eddie, tell us about your family relationships and what you liked and disliked about living in Chinatown. The birth order in our family is Mary, Jesse, Minerva, Grace, me, and Bill. Now this should give the lie to the fact that my mother was barren because we're all two years apart. <laughs> but for instance, when I'm at the playground, when we're doing Tai Chi with my sister Grace, and people would ask me who Grace was. And I would say, that's my D. In Chinese, it means she's my older sister. If she had been my younger sister, it would have been Moi Moi. So that's what I like about the Chinese family system. You know exactly where you stand in the family. I was supposed to answer to my older sisters, and my younger brother was supposed to answer to my authority. But Bill, being much taller than I was, resented the fact that I was Dai Ko, meaning big brother, and he was Sai Lo, little brother. That was enough for us to get into a fight every day. <laughs> then, of course, Pop would hear about it. We always thought he was omnipotent. There he was, stuck in his watch repair shop but he knew exactly what we had been up to because Chinatown was such a close-knit community. In a way, I hated the fact that Chinatown was bound by Sacramento Street on the south, Pacific Avenue on the north, Kearney Street on the east, and Howe Street on the north, on the west. It was basically 12 square blocks. I didn't know the word ghetto then, but I knew it was the area we were confined to. On the other hand, the thing I loved about Chinatown was the fact that we were a very close-knit community. Everyone looked out for all the kids to make sure they didn't get any trouble, and no one tried to molest them. Just like this business about it takes a village to raise the child, it was literally true in Chinatown. In our time, Chinatown was comprised largely of bachelors because men couldn't bring their wives over for one reason or another. So all children were loved and appreciated. We knew that everyone cared. So then, Eddie, why and how did you run away from home? I decided on my 16th birthday, I was going to leave home and go far away so my folks would no longer fuss over me. By then, I was really into horses, and I figured the way to be around horses was to work on a ranch. I got a map of the United States and told my brother Bill to blindfold me. I said, I'll take any state from Montana down to Texas. Somewhere along there, I'll find a cattle ranch. So he spun the map around, spun me around, and I pinned the tail. And it turned out to be Midland, Texas. But Midland is not a cattle town, it's an oil town. Also, where the bushes finally came down. <laughs> I saved about $100 and I figured that would last me for at least two months 
if I didn't find a job right away. But then I had to have bus fare. So I took my brother Bill, who was four inches taller than I was, down to the trailway bus station, and he got me a half fare bus ticket for kids <laughs> under 12. <laughs> of course, there was a kicker. I only got half meals when I found out from the first meal. <laughs> he was the only one who knew what I was going to do and where I was going to go, and he was sworn to secrecy. I took off to the bus station with all my belongings in my father's carpet bag. I had an alarm clock with me to make sure I would get up on time for work and some toiletry. I'd even scrounged a bed sheet to make sure I had linen. I had two extra shirts and just a pair of pants I had on because I figured if I was going to work on the ranch, I would have to buy work clothes like Levi's and things like that later on. I'd brought along a pair of cowboy boots that I had picked up during my first year at Poly High School. This was basically what I had when I left home. It was the beginning of an adventure. I never had any qualms about not being able to make it on my own, even at that age. If I couldn't find work on a ranch, I would find work doing anything. I wasn't worried. One thing for sure, I wasn't about to go home any day soon. <laughs>